Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Scrimshot Plays. I am Scrimshot, and today we will be opening two more packs of the set booster for Nuka Penna. Let's get into it. I always try and open it that way. I always try and pull on that. And then I remember that there is this little pull tab on the side. All right, we have, oh, let's do our milling here. We've got our art card. focus. It's pretty nice. What is it? We have Evelyn the Covetous by Marta Nail. Number 24 of 81. One more art card to add to the collection. Now the last couple times that we've opened a pack, the rares have been at the back. So I'm going to take a chance and I'm not going to move any to the back. Let's see what we've got. All right, we've got a basic swamp. Some nice art there. I don't know if nice is the right term for it. I do like the, uh, the like willowy kind of bonsai tree sort of aesthetic they've got going there. Next up is Plasma Jockey. Three and a red for a 3-1 creature, Viashino Warrior. Whenever Plasma Jockey attacks, target creature an opponent controls can't block this turn. Or you can Blitz for two and a red. If you cast this spell for its Blitz, blitz cost, it gains haste and, when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Not too bad. Not necessarily great, but not too bad either. Let's see if we can't adjust this a little bit. There you go, now we can all see the cards. All right, for those of you just joining us, uh, there will be a giveaway of an arena code at the end of this video. So stick around to the end if you wanna grab that. The next card up is a jackhammer. We have a one and a red for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus O. Oh. Equip cost is two. And attach to target creature you control. Equip only as a sorcery. So its speed is sorcery speed. But I do like it. It almost reminds me of like dwarven Dwarven stuff. Next card. We have a high rise saw jack. For two and a green, you get a 2 3 creature elf citizen with reach. That's pretty nice. I'm not sure what kind of weapon that is. It almost looks like a maybe a chainsaw. Uh, whenever high rise saw jack blocks a creature with flying, high rise saw jack gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. That's pretty good, actually. I like that. Moving on to the next card, we have Broken Wings. Two and a green for an instant. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. That feels a little overpowered, actually. Eh, I don't know. Two and a three, or three mana for an instant uh, destroy creature. That's pretty good, as long as it has flying. Stimulus package, two and a red and green for an enchantment, it's an uncommon. And when stimulus package enters the battlefield, create two treasure tokens. They're artifacts with tap to sacrifice this artifact and add one mana of any color. Sacrifice a treasure, create a one one green and white citizen creature token. Ooh, that's useful. So you get a mana and you get a uh, one one green and white citizen creature. It's awesome. Okay, Mr. Orfeo the Boulder. I think this is called a showcase border. I'm not sure, but I think it's called the showcase border because it's got kind of the uh, interesting 
designs on the edges there. So we have a one plus a black, red, and green for a an uncommon 2-4 legendary creature, Rhino Warrior. Whenever you attack, double target creature's power until end of turn. I just want to have a look at that art there. That's a that's nice. It's kind of dark, it's kind of dingy, but you get the feel of uh, the Rhino Warrior a little bit. It actually reminds me of the Jadoon from Doctor Who. Moving on, we have Quaza, Augur of Agonies. One white, blue, and black for a 3-4 uncommon legendary creature, Cephalid Advisor. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. For the cost, I'm not sure if that's worth it, but it could it could definitely be worth it because, I mean, yeah, it costs four, but you are getting a three, four, um, and you get, you, you basically get a net two life lead on your opponent whenever you draw a card. Okay, okay, I can work with that. Next, we have a Scuttling Butler, three colorless, for a 4-1 artifact creature that is uncommon. It is a construct. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control two or more per multicolored permanents, Scuttling Butler gains double strike until end of turn. Not bad, pretty straightforward. Colorless is always useful. Obscura Charm, white, blue, and black for an uncommon instant. I do like this uh, Art Deco border they've got going on there. So let's see what it does. It's uh, return target multicolored permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tap, or counter target instant or sorcery spell, or destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. So it's kind of useful, uh, but you do have to have those three mana in there, or um, you can fix that with treasure tokens. Let's move on to the next one. Our first rare of the pack, we have Xander's Lounge. It is a rare uh, land. It's an island swamp mountain. It gives you exactly that. It gives you a blue, black, or red. Xander's Lounge enters the battlefield tapped. You can cycle for three. You discard this card and draw a card. We have Crooked Custodian, and this is our first foil of the day. One and a black for a 3-2. That's a common ogre rogue creature. Crooked Custodian enters the battlefield tapped. Not actually pretty good. That's pretty good economy. For two mana, you get a 3-2 creature. And we have a promo. Uh, Othhelm. Sigardian Outcast for one, a green and a white. For a 2 2 legendary creature human. Uh, pay two and tap to choose target creature card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to the battlefield tapped. Friends forever. You can have two commanders if both have friends forever. Okay, so this must be a commander card. Interesting. Okay. And that's our first pack for the day. Please remember to hit that thumbs up, like and subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to see something else, remember to leave a comment down below in, in the comments uh, and I will see what I can do to accommodate. Um, remember to hit the bell if you subscribe because sometimes they don't, YouTube doesn't let you know about new content unless you hit the bell. All right. Next pack, still new Capenna. Let's dig in. Always gets me that one. Okay, uh, doesn't look like a token, but it could be. Let's check out the art card. Be nice. Kind of a seascape going on there. Not sure who this is. Let's have a look. Lagrella the Magpie. Let's see if it'll 
focus in there. Doesn't look like it's gonna do it. Maybe I gotta do this. Okay, well, it's Lagrella the Magpie by Donato Wonkola. Uh, it's number 28 out of 81, and it's a very, very blue card. Kind of dark, kind of dark. You've got this woman who is apparently stabbing some sort of contract with her dagger, and the contract has erupted in blue flame. Yet another for the collection, and I think we were pretty successful last pack so i'm gonna keep going with that and leave the rares at the end let's see what we've got okay right off the top we have a foil basic land island let's have a closer look of that art that is very pretty we have a lot of water coming out from looks like maybe a geyser of some kind inside a temple or a chamber but that is a foil, no doubt about it, and I am quite pleased with that. Next on the list, we have Backstreet Bruiser. Kind of a dark, kind of gangster, kind of looking guy. He's a one and a blue for a 3-3 Cephalid Rogue creature with Defender. As long as there are two or more counters among creatures you control, Backstreet Bruiser can't attack as though, or can, correction, can attack as though it didn't have defender. Okay, so pretty decent economy if you have tokens, or sorry, counters on creatures you control. Otherwise, it's just a blocker, which is okay. That's fine. Everybody needs blockers in their in their uh, deck. We have Rafine's Informant, a one and a white for a two-one human wizard creature. When Rafine's Informant enters the battlefield, it connives, which means draw a card, then discard a card. If you discarded a non-land card, put a 1-1 counter on this creature. Not bad economy, you've got uh, 2 mana for a 2-1. Could be pretty decent. We have Rafine's Guidance. Oh, that's neat. It's almost like a crystal ball going on there with some, maybe some steam buildings in the background. It is a one white enchantment aura. Uh, you can enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. You may cast Rafine's Guidance from your graveyard by paying two and a white rather than paying its mana cost. That could be useful because you can use it multiple times. You have Security Rocks. Two plus a red and a green for a five four uncommon Rhino Warrior. That's pretty good, I like that. And you may pay a red and a green rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Spend only mana produced by treasures to cast it this way. Okay, so that plays well with that other card that created uh, treasure tokens. Let's have a look here. It's pretty cool, I like that. Probably put that in a deck at some point. We've got Bouncer's Beatdown, two and a green for an uncommon instant. This spell costs two less uh, to cast if it targets a black permanent. Bouncer's Beatdown deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. That's neat. This, uh, this art reminds me quite a lot of Doctor Strange, um, just in the way it's kind of presenting itself there. We have Venom Connoisseur. One and a green for a 2-2 uncommon human druid creature with alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Venom Connoisseur gains death touch until end of turn. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, all creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. I really like that. It's uh, straight across the board. You've got two mana for a 2-2 but its ability makes it quite desirable in my opinion. We have Masked Bandits, three plus a black, red, and green um, with their Art Deco set border. It's a 5-5 creature, Raccoon Rogue, with Vigilance and Menace. Cost, uh, sorry, pay two to exile Masked Bandits from your hand. 
Target land gains. Tap to add black, red, or green until Mass Bandits is cast from exile. You may cast Mass Bandits from ex or sorry, you may cast Mass Bandits for as long as it remains exiled. Interesting. So it's almost like a holding pattern the way that's done. Oh, look at that. Just a raccoon. Just a big old raccoon. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Quasa, Augur of Agony. So oh, that's our second time this one's come up. One plus a white, blue, and black for a 3-4 uncommon legendary creature, Cephalid Advisor. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. I really like that art. It reminds me of the um, Zora from Legend of Zelda. We have Glamorous Outlaw. We've seen this one before. Three plus a blue, black, and red for a 4-5 Vampire Rogue. When Glamorous Outlaw enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to each opponent and you scry two. Pay two to exile Glamorous Outlaw from your hand. Target land gains. Tap to add blue, black, or red until Glamorous Outlaw is cast from exile. You may cast Glamorous Outlaw for as long as it remains exiled. Another one of those holding patterns. And we have Evelyn the Covetous, two plus either blue or black, a black, and either black or red. So you could run this in a splash deck or a straight black for a 2-5 legendary creature vampire rogue that is rare. And it has flash, which means that you can play it uh, like an instant. Whenever Evelyn, the covetous, or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of each player's library with a collection counter on it. Once each turn, you may play a card from the exile, or from exile, with a collection counter on it if it was exiled by an ability you control, and you may spend mana as though it were any color to cast it. Ooh, that's useful. I can see why that's a rare. We have Cabaretti Charm. This is a foil Cabaretti Charm. It costs a red, green, and white. For an instant, Cabaretti Charm deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker, or creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample until end of turn, or create two one, one green and white citizen creature tokens. Okay, and we are on the last card here, uh, Magic Minigame. Oh, this is interesting. Demons do for two or more players. One pack per player. It's a 10-minute game. As a member of a new Capenna crime family, you make a name for yourself by showing off your ill-gotten profits. But keep in mind, the most valuable trinkets go directly into the mob boss's pockets. Get ready. First, each player declares allegiance to a crime family. The families are... The Obscura, the Maestros, the Riveteers, the Cabaretti, and the Brokers. You can pick the same family as another player. Each player opens a booster, sets aside all cards without magic card backs, then shuffles the remaining cards to form their face down deck. Let's play. Each round, players draw until they have four cards. Players then place two cards from their hand face down in front of them as profit. When finished, all players simultaneously reveal their profit cards and, two-sided here, add together the mana values of their own cards. The player, or players, with the highest total mana value discards their profit cards. The boss requires payment. If any player's boss payment includes a land card, that player instead places the land in their bank to be counted later. Real estate is not, or is hot right now. Each other player puts both their cards into their bank to be counted later. Crime pays in New Capenna. To win, after five rounds, discard any remaining cards. Each player totals the mana values in their bank and earns that many points. Lands are worth three points. Players earn an additional two points for each card in their bank that has the watermark of their chosen crime family. The player with the most points wins. Ties are shared. Okay, that's interesting. And if you look down here, I don't know if it'll uh, focus, but uh, yeah, it's not going to focus for you. But we have, this is card two out of three, so there are two other mini games like this. 
Well, that was awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in, and as promised, today's giveaway. Let me know in the comments if you managed to grab that card, and let me know if you want to see something different. I've just been opening uh, draft and set boosters here, but if you guys want to see something different, I can probably make that happen. Leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time.